Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my driveway. I have a bit of a philosophical question for you. What's better than a BMW? Two of them. Yep, I went and did it. I bought another car. And this all started about oh, a month and a half ago when I went with some friends to Northwest Arkansas and drove the roads there except the BMW wasn't really ready for that trip, well, the E46. So I borrowed a friend's uh, Subaru BRZ in Azuma edition. As you can probably tell, it was a very, very good car, and a modern car, and a car that wasn't broken, and it, it, it was nice, and it didn't need anything. And then I came back, and I got in my Honda Insight, and I kind of thought to myself, so I kind of stretched the budget, and I've started eating uh, ramen almost exclusively, and I bought myself this, probably the nicest car that I've ever had, lowest mileage car I've ever had, I think, close to that at least, and, uh, it, it's in really good shape. I quite like it, but let's let's I, I guess I should explain what it is This is a BMW 328i. It is from the E92 generation Which is the one right after the E46 and with this came a bit of a shift in the way that BMW viewed their own products and who they were marketed towards but uh, This particular car is a very interesting moment for BMW in particular because this is the last reliable car they ever made these days, if you buy 330i or 328i or 320i or something like that, you're not getting a naturally aspirated straight six like you used to. Instead, what you're getting is a turbocharged four cylinder. And with that comes added complexity, cost, and maintenance. You have high pressure fuel pumps, direct injectors, and turbos, all of which are extremely expensive. This has the N52. And you might be noticing a trend here. Not too long ago, my buddy Tyler bought an absolute hoopty of an E90 sedan with the same engine, and I was just so impressed by it that I just had to get a nice one. So here we are. I actually bought this from a local dealership. Um, I, I probably overpaid a little bit, but this should be a very reliable car for quite a while. It has uh, one owner, uh, 100,000 miles on it, and uh, it's, it's, in, it's been really well taken care of. There's only a few things that have ever been touched on this. So let's go take a look around it. So starting here at the front, most obvious thing is the grills. They have been plastic dipped. Really not a fan of that. I'd like to either replace those or take that off. Also, it has had windshield sprayers added to the covers where the actual windshield sprayers would be. Don't love that. Probably gonna get rid of those and get some stock covers back on here that haven't been molested. The body works in okay shape. This bumper's had a few uh, hard times. This car was actually bought in Germany when it was brand new. The owner took European delivery and he was stationed in Germany so he just kept it there. So I had to get a German auto check report and it did say there was a minor front end collision, damage less than 500 euros. And you can tell the front was just repainted a little bit but really not that bad. I might get it repainted anyway to get rid of these front, front plate brackets. Other than that, front of the car looks pretty good. Got these big old chunky five spoke wheels clear corners, not folding uh, mirrors, which kind of makes me sad. Folding mirrors are probably the most baller option from this era. Uh, this trim has also been plastic dipped. Don't love that either, so I'll probably be taking that off. It does have a sunroof, shark fin antenna, mounts here for a roof rack, um, the rear wheels. So this car does have the sport package, so it sits a little bit lower than its contemporaries, and it also has a staggered wheel setup, 225 in the front, 255 in the rear and these are some bf goodrich all seasons they're directional you're not rotating these wheels baby moving on around the back there's really not much else going on here the 328i badge has been uh painted that's probably uh it's been plastic dipped i'm not even gonna take the plastic dip off i'm just gonna remove the badge i really like the debadged look on my absolutely filthy e46 so i'm probably just gonna do the same here something i have kind of been on the fence about is i've seen a few little lip spoilers on these that actually look quite fetching I've never really been a huge fan of that, but like that thing has a lip spoiler. Kind of a fan of it. 
I've got to say, just the look of the E92, it, it, this generation never did a whole lot for me, but I've kind of come around to the coupes because you don't see them all that often. And then if I, let's see here, if I give this a lock and unlock, uh, you can't tell because it's daytime, but these rear li lights are just gorgeous. They've got these three light pipes here that light up. You can kind of see that they're lit up now, but at night, it's just such a good look. The lighting on this car really is great. They've also got these little uh, down lights here on the uh, door handles to illuminate the ground. Unfortunately, this does not have comfort access, so I don't have the uh, automatic unlock when I grab the door handle. Um, the, it's, it's not a super high option car, but check out this interior. It's in such good condition. It's got the, uh, the big thing for me was that this has these sport seats, sport leather seats, and aluminum trim. I really didn't like the wood trim on any BMW sport sedans, really. On their higher models, it's fine, but yeah. Um, leather seats, the interior, uh, it's just, it's so good. It's all in such good shape. I love it. Leather steering wheel, also in good shape. I drive, and uh, one of the mods I've done already, I've done two things to this car already. The first one is the shift knob, and I'll show you what the old one looked like. Well, it's knob time, replacing this uh, nice looking but uh, very plasticky chrome wheel with the best shift knob that BMW ever made, the six-speed ZHP knob, very nicely weighted and very short. So let's uh, yank our knob. <clears throat> oh boy. <clears throat> Oh, I strained my back. Wow, that thing weighs nothing. <laughs> that is uh, that is quite the difference. So if we just... Oh, yeah. Oh, that is nice feeling. 10 out of 10 upgrade there. Oh, wow, that changes so much. Best shift on BMW ever made. They even agree with me. I mean, this came out for the ZHP. They've put it, I mean, you can find these, I think in the M2 CS, as well as in manual brand new M5s. So clearly, uh, clearly it has BMW stamp of approval. And the other one was the front brakes. The front brakes were just bad. <laughs> so it's got new front brake rotors. New brakes, because people insist on pad slapping cars for some reason and leaving warped rotors on. I, I have no idea why. Also, uh, door handle de-stickifying, um, which is absolutely awful, typical E90 things, uh, it's, it's, it's horrible. This, there's like an eighth inch layer of this awful rubber that is, uh, devulcanizing. It's real bad. Also, one thing I just remembered, I really want to do, pretty good. Let's take a look under the hood. One of the things I never really liked about these, the kidneys stay on the car. They don't go up with the hood. Boo BMW. But here's the N52. Um, one of the selling points on this was that the valve cover gasket, oil filter housing gasket, uh, oil pan gasket, radiator, and some coolant lines had already been replaced on this, so it should be fairly maintenance-free for me. A lot of the big ticket items have already been taken care of. It also looks like some stuff had been done before the dealership got it because it had new tie rod ends. That air filter and that air filter are both brand spanking new. Uh, the only thing that's not standard N52 under here is this wiring here for the uh, add-on uh, little sprayer guys. I don't actually know what activates those kind of interesting, but everything under here looks quite good. And you can see the uh, valve cover was leaking before. But while we're under the hood, this does beg the question, what's the purpose of this car? Well, this is my comfy daily driver. This is something for me to get to work. My day job, I do a lot of driving for it. I also want something that I can take to Northwest Arkansas and have some fun with on the roads that doesn't absolutely suck. And uh, I just haven't been able to do as much with this or especially the Insight, because the Insight's been my daily for a while now, and I, I can't really do any large projects on it if it has to be able to get me to work in, on the following Monday. So now I should be able to make a lot more videos with my cars with a lot less worry, 
which will be very nice. As far as mods, no real plans. I've kind of done everything except for that. That is kind of the secret of the 328i because the 328i is a lower end model. Cheaper insurance, cheaper to buy, but you see right here, there's a couple plugs. And they're not hooked up to anything. And what those are is for the two-stage DISA system. If you buy an intake manifold off of a 330i, which I have done, it hasn't even shipped yet, I'm waiting on eBay to get with me on that, you just pop it on here, flash the tune, which you can do for free, flash the factory 330i tune, so it's all still factory, and you've effectively converted your car into a 330i, which takes you from 225-ish horsepower to 267. That's a big jump. That's a lot. That's a good amount of power, because this thing, it's not that slow. It's a, this is a fun little ripper, just as it is, and we'll take it out here in a second, but just, just that, just a $300 intake manifold. That's pretty much my only modification plan. Oh, and uh, CarPlay. It needs to have CarPlay. Everything has to have CarPlay. Anything I'm daily driving, that is non-negotiable. Oh, let's sit down in here. I am a little bit sad about the lack of comfort access. Uh, it does mean I have to insert the key in order to start it up. Gauge cluster is pretty nice. I, it's not quite as iconic as the E46s, and then we've got the iDrive, and oh gosh, here's trouble. Oh, trouble part do. MR do, actually. Huh. Bro, I'm gonna get copyright strikes. Stop it. I'm gonna do a full review of this car later, obviously, and there's a couple things that need done. The uh, starter motor is weak, which is reasonably typical of the N52. Uh, the front lower control arms are bad. They've been replaced though, uh, but they're replaced with TRW parts which have gone bad already. So I'm gonna replace those as soon as I'm done making this video. <laughs> and then we're just gonna start making another video. Uh, sway bar end links and I think the trans mount, uh, minor things, very minor things. So not a whole lot to fix, all minor stuff. I don't have to spend like most of my life baselining this car. It'll just be good to go. It's something I can get in and drive, enjoy driving, good sound system. This uh, this just has the hi-fi sound system, not the like uh, Logic 7 or Harman Kardon or anything like that. So you get one, two, three, four, eight speakers and two subwoofers under the seats. It sounds pretty good, honestly. I would like to upgrade those under seat subwoofers though. They could just, they just use a little bit more. But other than that, I'm super thrilled with this thing. I've been driving it, you know, daily, like you do, and... And overall, I, I kind of love this platform. I mean, I'm, I'm still gonna be making E46 content. Hi, Tyler. He's, he's working on his Z90. Things are happening. What? Open. I need to open the garage. So I'm gonna go do that. Thanks for watching. Overall, so far with this car, I am pretty thrilled. I did overpay by, uh, eh, I don't know, a decent amount. I did check with a friend of mine who works at a popular car auction website, and it is his job to know what things are worth, and he said this was a pretty solid buy at uh, $13,000. Now, I don't have that kind of cash just lying around, so I did finance it through Lightstream, whom I've used before, with the expectation that I'll have it paid off within a year anyway by selling um, one of my nine vehicles that I have, I think. Some of those need to go. We're, we're consolidating a little bit, and it has been tremendously good for me to just have something that works and that feels nice and is still rewarding to drive. Sure, I could buy a brand new Toyota Corolla hatchback, but I would hate it because I've driven them and I hate them. Good car, not for me. It is unfortunate that I'm neurotic about my daily driver to this extent. I wish I could just be happy with a crossover or a automatic Civic or whatever people drive these days, but uh, here I am in a sport package BMW. I'll now demonstrate my favorite parts of this car. Firstly, it is very quiet, and I appreciate that. Not only 
wind noise, which there is basically none, despite the fact that this has frameless windows, but also the engine note. There's very little noise coming from ahead of or behind me. But wow, does it give a very confident and exceedingly smooth shove of power on demand at pretty much any point in the rev range. This engine is really a gem, and again, I'll do a full review on this thing later once I've had some more time with it. And now we just sit, and I can set the cruise control, and we just vibe. Nothing but vibes here. Or we can take this off ramp, and I can talk about one of the other things I really like about this. The sport package really does add something. This car feels very confident in corners, though it does feel quite a bit heavier than my E46 did, despite not really weighing all that much more. It just has sort of a more massive way of going into corners. Of course, this is a sport package on a base 3 Series, not a sport package on, say, the 335, which might... I don't know. I know it has bigger brakes. I don't know what else they might have on that thing, but this thing does not disappoint when the time comes to take an off-ramp with the cruise control set. Slowing down is for lesser people in lesser cars. And then for those long straight sections, of which um, Kansas is entirely made out of those, I set the cruise control, watch the little second needle come up to tell me how fast I'm going, and uh, listen to some music and let the AC waft cool air at me in a very unobtrusive fashion. I've just learned that the cruise control will stay working through a shift. Interesting, I expected it to disengage when I pushed the clutch in. Today I've learned things. Off-ramp time. My camera! <laughs> oh no. The G-forces provided by the BMW 3 Series were too much for my <laughs> camera mount, apparently. <laughs> Come back, please. Ah, there we go. Hello, and goodbye. Thank you all for watching. I'm gonna go uh, take this apart because I am me and I cannot resist.